Hey, you guys. Uh, so I promised on my live video that I was going to do another short teaching from Luke and James. And I actually, um, there's some other scriptures I found while I was looking at them. Uh, there's another one in Phil Philippians too. Uh, so this teaching goes along with what I just said about, um, God saying, welcome me into your darkness and let him show you any blind spots that you might have, that I might have, so that um, he can turn all of our darkness and our blindness into light. Okay, so that's really what he wants to do. He came to open blind eyes. He came to set the captive free. But we all have areas where we think there's no way that you know, I've got an issue in that area. You know, it's easier to see it in other people, not in ourselves. But um, here's an example of it. Okay, Luke 22. If you have your Bibles, you can go to that. But Luke 22, um, Jesus is just having that last supper with his 12 closest friends, the 12 disciples that he handpicked to teach them and train them to become leaders of um, the, the church, the early church. And uh, so he's having communion with them before his death is going to happen. And this is a picture of unity, of coming together in unity and uh, having unity of heart, unity of motive, that kind of thing. And so look what happens. Jesus says, you know, after supper, he's like, talks about the, the cup is the new covenant between God and people, an agreement confirmed with my blood, which is poured out as a sacrifice for you. Verse 21, but here at this table, sitting among us as a friend, one of my 12 closest friends is a man who will betray me. For it has been determined that the son of man must die, but what sorrow awaits the one who betrays him? So the disciples began to ask each other, which of them would ever do such a thing? <laughs> so they just got done having this communion and they're all feeling all close and buddy-buddy with Jesus. And they're like, I would never do such a thing. Would you do that? No, I would never do that. And then <laughs> they're saying like, they're looking at themselves and saying, I would never do that. I'm sure you would never do that. You would never do that, would you? Who would ever do such a thing? Then they began to argue among themselves about who would be the greatest. So they're just saying like, I could never betray Jesus. You know what? I like him. I'm so close to Jesus that I would do this. I love Jesus so much that I would even do this for him. I'm going to be the greatest in the kingdom of heaven because I'm closer to Jesus than you are. They're comparing themselves to each other and there's arguing breaking out. They began to argue among themselves who would be the greatest based on Jesus saying, there's someone here who's going to betray me. There's someone here who's got some major blind spots and they think they're right, but they are way off. So they're all like, oh, that can't be me. It can't be me. Arguing is happening. They all want to say that they're the one closest to Jesus. They're the one who's right. Everybody else is wrong. But Jesus went on to say, In this world, kings and great men lord it over their people. Yet they are called friends of the people. But among you, it will be different. It must be different. Those who are greatest among you should take the lowest rank. And the leader should be like a servant. Who is more important? The one who sits at the table or the one who serves? The one who sits at the table, of course, but not here. For among, I am among you as one who serves. So all the disciples, they think they're the most loyal to Jesus. They're closer to Jesus than anybody else. I would never betray him. But this, what scripture does this remind you of? It reminded me right away of James 4. And I want to go there real quick. Oh, shoot. I lost my place in Philippians. Oh, well, I'll find it in a second. But um, 
Oh no, that's that's Philippians right there. Okay. Uh, so James four. Now we always talk about why is that happening on the inside of you? Like if something is going on and you're hurting on the inside, why is that happening? What is causing it? So I love that James four starts out with what is causing it? <laughs> James is saying, what is causing those quarrels and fights among you? Just like the disciples just had. James, I think James, yeah, I think James was one of those disciples there at the table. So he's speaking from experience. He was fighting and arguing with the, the other disciples all the time. And I'm going to be greater than you. And I'm closer to Jesus than you are. I'm more loyal to him than you are. Well, what he found out, I need to just look at my own soul and go, what's causing the quarrels and fights among you? But there could be like fighting on the inside of you happening. So what's causing it? And he answers his own question. Don't they come from the evil desires at war within you? So he's recognizing it's in me. If there's fighting and quarreling happening and jealousy happening, it's in me, something in me. You want what you don't have, so you scheme and you kill to get it. You are jealous of what others have, but you can't get it, so you fight and wage war to take it away from them. Hmm. You don't have what you want because you don't ask God for it, and even when you ask, you don't get it because your motives are all wrong. You want only what will give you pleasure. So selfish motive, something for you. So this is happening on the inside of me, on the inside of you. Doesn't the quarrel and fight. So if there's quarreling and fighting happening in your life or in your family or in your marriage, look where it's coming from. What is causing it, Lord? It comes from the evil desires at war within me. If there's fighting and quarreling among a ministry or among a church, what is causing the quarrel and fighting? It's the evil desires at war within you and me. You want what you don't have. You scheme and kill to get it. You're jealous of what other people have. You have wrong motives, selfish motives that are all about you. So let's back up a second to James 3, verse 13 and 14. Here's part of the answer. If you're wise and understand God's ways, then prove it by living an honorable life, doing good works with humility that comes from wisdom. But if you're bitterly jealous and there's selfish ambition in your heart, don't cover up the truth with boasting and lying. Don't cover up the truth that you, that you have that selfish ambition that's causing quarreling and fighting. Don't cover it up. Don't pretend. Don't pretend to be good and perfect and close to Jesus when there's selfish ambition happening. He said, um, don't cover up that truth, just admit it. That's the only way to be free from something. And we talk about it a lot in church. It's just admit it. Just admit that you need freedom. And that's where freedom will happen. Uh, for jealousy and selfishness are, are not God's kind of wisdom. Such things are earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For wherever there's jealousy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and evil of every kind. So disorder, evil, quarreling, fighting, jealousy, wanting what you can't have, never getting it. <laughs> you know, all of that is happening because of jealousy and selfishness. Wherever there's jealousy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder, chaos, and evil of every kind. But the wisdom from above is, first of all, pure. It is also peace-loving, gentle at all times, and willing to yield to others. It is full of mercy and the fruit of good deeds, shows no favoritism, always sincere. Those who are peacemakers plant seeds of peace and reap a harvest of righteousness. Okay, so then James 4 goes on to say, after it says this is what's causing these quarrels and fights, it's something in you. He says, so humble yourself before God and he will lift you up in honor. And this is how Jesus did it. In Philippians 2, it says, you must have the same attitude that Christ Jesus had. Even though he was God and he really had the right to 
say, you should respect me more than this. You should honor me more than this. He did not think of equality with God as something to cling to. Instead, he gave up his divine privileges. He gave up his rights. You guys, we need to have the same attitude as Jesus. Give up your rights. Just give them up. You may have rights. You may be right to, you may, it may be fair or just for you to be treated a certain way. It may be unfair or unjust for you to be treated a certain way, but give up your rights. Give them up. Jesus gave up his, his divine privileges. He took the humble position of a slave. In another position, or another uh, translation, it says, he made himself of no reputation. You guys, we got to give up our reputation. We can't, uh, Jesus didn't think, you know, seek honor or respect. He didn't seek a good reputation with people. He wanted his reputation with the Father to be more important, or he knew that it was more important. So he he made himself of no reputation. He did not seek to be respected or honored by people. Born as a human being, when he appeared in human form, he humbled himself in obedience to God and died a criminal's death on a cross. Therefore, he humbled himself, and so therefore God elevated him to the place of highest honor. And this is true for you as well. Honor from God is so much better than honor from men. If we will humble ourselves before God, get rid of selfish ambition and all the quarreling and, and fighting that comes from our own self selfishness on the inside, humble ourselves before God, then he will honor you. He will honor you. And his honor is so much better than the honor or respect from people. So to, to try to get honor from somebody or to want it and think you deserve it or you should have it. I mean, it really doesn't matter whether you do deserve it or not. Maybe you do. But when you give it up and say, I don't need it, then that's when God can honor you. That's when the quarreling will stop. That's when you can have peace. That's when you actually get grace from God. That's when he actually opens doors for you instead of you fighting and quarreling and trying to make it happen and striving and working at it so hard. Give it up. Lord, forgive me for that selfish ambition. I give up my rights. I give up all the, the, the things that seem fair to me or seem just to me. I give up my reputation. I give up seeking honor from people or position of any kind, Lord. It's all yours, and that's when he will honor you and lift you up. Um, so yeah, we'd love to hear you guys' thoughts on that, but those are some things that I was thinking about the last couple weeks, I guess. It's just sort of been going through my mind for a while when I read that scripture in Luke about the disciples all quarreling, who would ever do such a thing? But obviously we know that one of those that was closest to Jesus, one of the 12, did betray him. And um, all of them actually ended up leaving him, right? They all left him that night. Peter also denied him. Um, all the disciples ran away and abandoned him. So they all said, I would never do something like that. But they all had that in their hearts. Um, and so just be humble enough to admit your areas of weakness and admit uh, your areas of selfish ambition, wanting to be great. If you really want to be great, you have to humble yourself and make yourself small <laughs> in the kingdom of God. That's how things work. Um, not saying it's easy and not saying I have it all figured out, but uh, just some thoughts that God's been teaching me. So. Would love to hear you guys' perspective on that too. Okay, love you. I'll talk to you soon. Have a great week.